bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Good. God is good. God is good. Amen. I wanted to hug you. Thank you, Lord. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Hallelujah. Friends and family, loved ones, we're glad you're here. We thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Being a part of this awesome, awesome move of God. We we doing our seven up service and, and the ministers' alliance is in charge. We're just glad for Elder Sylvia Monroe Amen. and Second Chance Universe Ministerial staff. Amen. Amen, amen. I um I want to go right into a word because it's going to take everybody 10 minutes to, and I want to go right into the word so everyone can have enough time to shabak him and yes. give him praise. Amen. So I want you to, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about the word. I'm excited about the word. So I'm gonna have to do this do I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna get I'm gonna, and then some our brother uh you pass Alexis story to wrap it up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mighty man of valor. So we did the welcome address, we worship, we did praise and everything. And uh if anybody wants from the welcome wanna give us a response from the visiting churches, you may give us a response at this time. Anyone? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get the mic. Thank you. Come on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Forgive me for my disobedience. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Right. On behalf of my pastor, New Life, from right. Lake St. Durham, of New Life Christian my Ministry, best, amen. we come to give a second chance. Our love, as always, because we are our family. And we love when we fellowship together. Yes. And I just couldn't miss coming into the house of the Lord just one more time. So we, we thank you and we appreciate it. And I'm pleased to you to invite us back. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Bless you, bless you. I, I thank God for the response. We, we're going to do one more response from a visiting church. Come on. Amen. Amen. One more response. Okay, it's you. Issue. You are. Yeah. Who, me? <laughs> yes. Uh, She's going to come. Come. Amen. 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 Truly, I'd like to give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank this mighty woman of God for standing in front of us and welcoming us into her house. Okay, when we entered into the door, I felt welcome. Jesus. Okay, and, and we're no stranger to the liberty of God. Yes. So I thank her for the welcome, and I bring you greetings from Greater Temple of Blessing, where the pastor is Apostle Dr. Jesse M. Edgington and Pastor Lakinia Trollinger. And I want to just say thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, are y'all ready? Our first, first wake up from Deacon T. Corbett from Promise Ministries. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Deacon. Bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise I'm, the Lord. I'm kicking it off. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, you can do well. it. You can do it. Wake us up, right? Uh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Give an honor to God and to my spiritual parents, Apostle William and Pastor Rebecca Fuller. Thank you, Lord. I honor them in their, in their absence tonight. I'm thankful to be here. Well, without delay, let's get right into the word. Psalms 118 and verse 24. Amen. When you have it, say amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, I'm in your hands. Amen. 
Yes, Lord. I'm in your hands, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. I'm in your hands, Jesus. I'm in your hands, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm in your hands. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Jesus. I'm in your hands. Yes. Psalms 118 and verse 24. And this is what it says. This is the, no, this is the day which the Lord hath made. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking about wake up. And thinking about this subject, when I looked at the scripture, I says, wake up is not in here. Mm -hmm. But then when I started to look at rejoicing, it makes sense why we need to wake up. Because there's too many of us who are spiritually sleeping. Amen. My God, go ahead, go ahead. So, tell the truth. Tell the truth. And, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. and what we need to do is that we must recognize that we're in a place of turmoil. Mm -hmm. There's things going around us that are just not right. There's so many things going on that are just throwing us in a state of confusion. And they're trying to put us in a place of unrest. So therefore, we must take every opportunity to embrace the love of God yes. and to rejoice for the day that he has given us. Yes. God wants us to wake up and to fight with the tools that he has equipped us with, yes. to stand against the strategies of the enemy. God's desire for us to be active and fight in the good fight of faith because he wants us to grow up. And he wants to bring us out of the dark places into a place of freedom. He wants to bring us in a place of rest. Yes. He wants to bring us in a place of unforeseen circumstances that we never thought we would get out of. Yes. Instead of being in a place of, of slumber and a place of feeling sorry for ourselves, God doesn't want us to do that. Yes. When life hits us with circumstances Come and it me. starts to crush us, this is not the time to be discouraged or, yeah. or have the temptation to quit or to sin. Yeah. We must use every opportunity to encourage our hearts and rejoice into our victory, to seize the day, to redeem the times because they are so evil. It's time to celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living. Yeah. We need to embrace and celebrate the fact that God loves us and that he is not out to punish us or to beat us down to submission, but to bring us a future and a hope Hallelujah. and expect an end. Yes. Now, there are a lot of reasons why we fall asleep. One of the reasons is that if we have prolonged difficulties, which has led to bitterness toward God. Go ahead. The second reason is a hardening of your heart by the deceitfulness of sin. Yes. And the third reason is the slow choking of worldliness. Yes. Let us not think on these things. Let us not think about sadness, but let us command with authority joy when we fall into temptations and yes. trials. No matter what comes our way, rejoicing in our God will bring the strength yes. that we yes. need to yes. jump through our hurdles in life. Rejoicing. It's not a quiet activity. You yes. know that. It's, like it's not a quiet activity. It is something that requires you to be festive. Yes. It's yes. something that requires you to be active. Yes. It's something Hallelujah. that shows the enemy in the circumstances that you mean business. Too many times we want to stand like wallflowers and think we're going to wait for the, for the blessings to come down. But no, we got to rejoice. We got to stand up. We got to wake up. We got to recognize that God is for us. And if God is for us, who would dare stand against us? Jesus. And, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. It is a foundation. It is the foundation, it is an expression of our love towards God. In other words, he wants to know, are you happy to see him? Yes. Think about it from a child's perspective. Go when you walk through the door, and if that child loves you, they're going to give you a dance. Yes. They're going to put up their arms yes. so you can hug them. Yes. They're going to do something that shows you that you're happy to see them. So I, here's we have to ask ourselves, and this is what the Lord wants to know. Are you happy to see me when hard times yes. come? Are you happy to see me when you go through trouble? Are you happy to see me when you don't have your way? And listen, when you are rejoicing, it means to brighten up. It means to put a yes, smile on your yes, face. Yes. To rejoice, it means to leave. Yes. And to rejoice, it means to spin around. Yes. It's time that we dance before our God and dance in our circumstances and let them know that we are with you no 
no matter what, we love you, Lord. We are here because we oh, know Lord. that you desire to teach us and to show us the way. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Scripture says, rejoice in our confident hope yes. and keep on praying. Let us not give way to the enemy and his devices. Let us seize the moment and rejoice in our God. Mm -hmm. We have to wake to righteousness and sin not. I'm going to close with Joel chapter 2. My God. Go ahead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm reading verses 21 to 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says. <laughs> Fear not, O land. Yes. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Mm -hmm. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month or all at the same time. Just remember that God wants to give you a lot of things all at the same time. All you got to do, just remember to rejoice in the middle of your circumstances and ask the Lord to rain on your field, to rain on the ground that you're walking on, to rain in your household, to rain in your prayer closet. Don't be ashamed to ask for the rain because as long as the rain keeps coming, the seeds will go down and break apart and bud, and you'll be able to grow up and sprout like never before. Glory. Get ready for dress up uh, with our evangelist Shaniqua Mitchell. How do you feel about very own second chance deliverance? Second chance adopted worship center. I give honor to the Lord who's the head of my life. I give honor to my Pastor Jamie Latham, my overseer Sharima Latham. I give honor to my husband in the building. I give honor to our elder and our assistant pastor in her absence. I give honor to all the precious people of God. God, I thank you right now, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for I was never, oh God, a fighter in the natural, but you made me one in the spirit. God, I give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, move me out of the way as you speak to your people, God. And as we, oh God, listen and feast on your word, I pray that you would dress your people tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you tonight. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. Our word is going to be coming from 1 Samuel. Amen. Chapter 16, verse 7. Thank you, Jesus. When you have it, say amen. 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 But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yeah. Oh God, as I begin to wrestle with this scripture, um, it was so many different angles to come from. Uh, when we look um, at how our human selves, we look upon a situation, we look at the outer appearance of something, but very rarely do we look at the innermost part of a thing. And one of the things, just to give you a little history that I thought about, is when the children of Israel, God had brought them through the wilderness. He delivered them from Pharaoh. He led them through the wilderness. He fed them with manna. He yes. gave them water. He gave them everything they needed. And when they came out, I want a king. I want a king. I want a king. But they never, they never thought to 
to look at what having a king would mean. And so they, God chooses Saul to be their king. And um, he looked good. He was tall, ladies. He was dark and handsome. He was fine. Oh, he looked so good. He looked so appealing to the eye. But no one thought to look at the inner man. The inner man of Saul, he was, he, he, while he was good looking and he was a warrior and he was ready to go to battle. His heart, he was disobedient. He was arrogant. He was impatient. He was unruly. Oh God, we thank you tonight. Oh God, he, he had all the outward markings of a great king, but inwardly he wasn't dressed pro properly. Oh, so God rejected him. Oh God, we thank you today. Just like, um, in our lives, oh God, we have demons, we have devils. The Bible says that they will come as an angel of light. Now, and when they come into our lives, we, we, we look on a situation when the bondages come in our lives. We look at it when, when the circumstances, when the terror, when the guilt, when the shame comes in. We look at the situation. Oh God, but God, oh, like Elijah, like, um, Excuse me, like Elijah told Elisha, go and look again. Oh God, we thank you, we praise you. Oh, so now Saul rejects, um, the Lord rejects Saul, and he chooses David because David was a man after God's own heart. But when they looked at David, they looked at David and saw that he was young, he was ready, uh, he was small, he was stinking. He, oh God, he was the keeper of the father's sheep. But how many know that in that man lie courage, in that man lie the anointing? Oh God, they even tried to hide. When the Lord came to anoint him, uh, oh God but said, um, the Lord told Samuel, you know, rise up and anoint him, for this is he uh, that I have chosen. Uh, God had given, oh God, David, so many things that wanted, were on the inward man. Uh, oh, he was the only one when it was time to fight Goliath. Uh, he was the only one that said, oh no, who is this thing uh, that defies the armies of the living God? Uh, oh, I will go out against this man. Uh, and as Goliath was spewing out threats as a Goliath uh, was saying all these things. Uh, oh God, he said, oh God, the Lord, he delivered, oh God, me from the lion and the bear. Uh, he delivered me from this and he delivered me from that. And this day I'm going to kill you uh, and I'm going to give your body uh, to the fowls of the air. Come here, Melodia. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're in a time and in a season where we can't afford to be undressed. We can't afford to be naked. We can't afford to not be right. This is a time and a season where we have to not look upon the outward situation. We can't look at the finances. We can't look at, oh God, the bondage. We can't look at the sickness. We can't look at what the enemy says. But this is a time and a season where we have to rise up and we call ourselves blessed. This is a season where we have to stand on the word of God. This is a season that the weapons of our warfare are oh, not carnal, but the mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I ask you today, what is in your war chest? Where is your fasting? Where is your praying? Oh, where is your worship today? Oh, getting dressed doesn't start at the moment when the power will rise. Oh, but getting dressed is our everyday thing. Getting dressed is a lifestyle. Getting dressed is taking up your cross and denying yourself and following the Lord. Getting dressed means taking on his yoke, but his yoke is easy and his burden is lighter.
something. Hallelujah. If you are not properly dressed in this season, I promise you, I promise you that the enemy will expose you. I promise you that the enemy will sift you as wheat. I promise you, hallelujah, that if you're not in this thing for real, I advise you to go back home. And when you get back home, open up your closet. When you get back home, I want you to look in your closet. What's in your wardrobe? Oh, is your helmet up, polished? Is your breastplate tight? Oh, where's the truth? Where are you really in peace today? I want you to go back in your closet. Oh, but we have a lot of shoes, and we have all of these things. But when it's time for war, what do we do? Are we worrying? Hallelujah. Or are we worshiping? Are we crying? Hallelujah. Or are we standing up in the word of God? No longer can we sit back and be immature Christians. We have to stand up today when I think God with the light of truth. Hallelujah. And I think shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. No longer, hallelujah, will we allow the devil, hallelujah, to come into our homes, to come into our churches. Oh, but I'll tell you today, get dressed, get dressed while you still have a chance. And the next time you see that devil, take his head. Oh, yeah. shut your mouth yes. if you do these things. Yes. My God. Um, like Zechariah, Luke, mm -hmm. verse 1, 19 through 20, and verse 1, 57 through 64, you can read it at your time. Okay. He shut his mouth, the archangel shut his mouth because he didn't believe that at an age that someone would bear a child and name the child John. So his mouth was shut by Gabriel for the nine months until the baby was born. Shut up. Maybe a little maybe a little offensive to people, but sometimes you really need to say shut up. People talk their way out of their blessings because they won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that Peter and Sue instead of keeping it between you and God. I always say, if you don't have anything good to say, shut up. <laughs> say nice things and learn to listen. God gave us two ears, one mouth, so he must have meant for us to do more listening than talking. How many saints know it's better to shut your own mouth than for God to shut it for you? Saints, you don't need to speak all that you think because it can get you into trouble. Yes. Like on your job when the devil is on your heel mm -hmm. and you're ready to spaz out. Mm -hmm. Then you hear that still small voice saying, shut up. 
this battle is not yours. Yes. 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 My God. Amen. Amen. Psalms 34, verse 34, um, 34, 13 says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Yes. Proverbs 13 and 3 says, he who guard his lips guards his soul. Mm -hmm. My God. My God. First Peter 3 and 10 says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. In today's world, people talk a lot and saying much of nothing. Saints, it's time to wake up and learn to shut up and know God has your back no matter what. Yes, it's a test and you need to know that you know that you know this too shall pass, yes, yes, and you will yes, yes. shut up. Amen. In my conclusion, shut up if you have nothing good to say to one another. Shut up when people are gossiping in your space. Shut up when someone gets on your nerves, because once you speak a thing, you can't take it back. Amen. You know? Amen. So you just remember, you're still God's beautiful children. You just have to learn how to be quiet in certain situations because things are happening and then you don't know how to get out of it. So the perfect thing to do is just shut up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes you do have to just shut up so you can hear yourself. Hallelujah. I am a, I'm excited. How many of y'all excited? How many of you enjoying the word right now? Come on, come on. How many are enjoying it? Come on. I, hallelujah. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying these great dynamic speakers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And before we're going to have now, come on, give me a little drum roll. Give me a little drum roll. Yes, we got we gotta keep the audience going. Come on, y'all gotta stay up with me. Come on, come on, stay up. Come on, come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give me a little shot music. Come on, I need a little shot music. Everybody stand up, come on. Come on, come on.
shaped you. It's never, ever, ever about me. You cannot open the word of God and see the gospel of April. And so I've been charged today. I'm actually standing in the gap for our minister, um, George Ward, whose sister, the prophetess, went home to glory. Amen. And so I am standing in the gap for him. Amen.